Hello, my scholars. This is my school channel, and my name is Abdullah. For this video lesson, we are going to go through the measure of location or measure of central of tenders. So, what exactly do we mean? You know, we are going to be talking about certain statistical information that are very useful. You know, basic tools like your mean, like your median, like your mode. Of course, we have a template here to work with in the course of our short video. So, do not go anywhere. Stay with us, and we will be right back. channel so right here we have before us measure of location or measure of central tendency all right so what does this mean measure of location is actually talking about uh, you know the tendency for some sets of giving um, data you know to revolve around the center or the middle so you can refer to this as a um, measure of central tendency you know you are looking at that statistical information that tells you this is the middle or the center of a given set of data so this is exactly what we are doing so basically you know the three tools that we should look into they are your mean your median and your mode of course well as well just as an addition or additions we are going to look into quartiles um, deciles and percentiles Okay, so right here we are going to kick off with mean. So you can see now that mean we have our arithmetic mean, we have our geometric mean, we have our monic mean. What do these things mean? Okay, what what are their implications? Okay, so let's start off with um, arithmetic mean. So you can see it here. Um, the sum total of you can just say sum over size, right? Um, how many items do you have? So like for instance, if I'm asked to find the mean of my fingers right on my left hand so i'm going to count my left finger how many fingers do i have i have one two three four five so the arithmetic mean or the average of this will just be one two three four five so five divided by how many fingers do i have i have five so five divided by five that is one you can see that now so you are just going to count the items you have right you are going to sum up their values together so like for instance if i have the values of two um three seven eight so i will just add up two three two plus three that is that's um of course five plus seven that gives me twelve. Twelve plus this, that's twenty. Over how many? One, two, three, four. So that's my mean. Okay, we are looking for the average. So this is a very important or the most important representative of the entire set of data. Okay, so basically when you come to arithmetic mean, you can see that it's just uh, you are looking at the most important factor, that center, that middle, the average, yes, to put. So we can refer to this as arithmetic mean or arithmetic average, geometric mean or geometric average. All right, so you can see here, this is for ungrouped data and this is for grouped data. All right, and of course you can get to arithmetic mean using what we call the assumed mean. So the assumed mean is just something you are going to use your uh, inspection to, to, to do, right? You just pick a particular value that is close to what you think should be the middle or the center right of the entire data that is given so once you have not done that you can actually do this so once you have gotten your or you have determined your assumed mean so you just see your arithmetic mean right equals your assumed mean right plus your mean deviation so what is deviation so like for instance if i have this this is okay so let me just assume that my um, assumed mean should be let me take it as four okay let me take my assumed mean should be, to be four all right or let me take it to be three anything you want me to use okay let me just take it as three okay so i've taken my assumed mean to be three so that's going to be three right plus what is the deviation so deviation is telling us that how well or how far does each item right uh, is distant from the mean i have assumed Okay, so I've assumed the mean to be 3. So how distance is 2 from the assumed mean? 3. That is 2 minus 3. That is actually minus 1. Do we see that now? So the deviation for this is actually 1 minus 1. 3 from the assumed mean, the deviation is actually 0. The distance or discrepancy is actually 0. This 7 from the assumed mean, that is what? 4. Then 8 from the assumed mean, that is what? That is um, 8 minus 3, that is 5. Okay, so we can see. So we are going to take the mean of this so that's what we mean by mean deviation so basically we can find our arithmetic mean by using the assumed mean right plus your mean deviation 
do we see that right now? So all you can use what we call the coded factor. It's very similar to your mean deviation, right? What actually makes it different is that this time around you are going to be introducing the usage of your class width. Okay, so I explained class width in the previous video. Now regarding the representation of data, the graphical and the tabular representation. So that is how we can determine our arithmetic. So basically, for you to get your average, what you are going to do is we are going to take the sum of the high tens you have, right? But the uh, distinction that now marks arithmetic mean from geometric mean is that arithmetic mean uses sum, this uses product. Do we see that now? So it's going to be product of, you see that, product of your high tens, right, divided. So you can see what we have right here. So you can see that geometric mean is, if I have how many high tens? I have one, two, three. I'm going to multiply them together and I'm going to find their cube roots. If they are four in number, I'm going to find their fourth root. Do we see that now? This is just basic, right? If they are five in number, I'm going to find their fifth root. So if they are two in number, I'm going to find their square root. That is geometric mean, basically, right? So I want to make sure that we are talking about non-zeros. Okay, so this is just... So uh, where arithmetic mean uses sum, this uses products. Okay, so we now have your harmonic mean. Now, what your harmonic mean is actually doing is that when you have some numbers like this, okay? So, you want to find the mean of your reciprocal. So, the reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2. Reciprocal of this is 1 over 3. Reciprocal of this is 1 over 7. Reciprocal of this is 1 over 8. So, you find the mean of their reciprocal. Are you seeing that now? So, once you have gotten the mean of their reciprocal, the harmonic mean is now the reciprocal of the mean reciprocal of these numbers. Okay, I'm going to take that again. So your harmonic mean yeah, is the reciprocal of the reciprocal value of mean that you have taken of this. So look at this. This is the data that we have, right? So this is the reciprocal. So once I've taken their mean, right, the arithmetic mean. So let me say I'm taking the arithmetic mean of this, right, the reciprocal value. So I will now come to now get my harmonic mean. It will now be the arithmetic mean value. That we have here so this is what we are saying you have this you have this data you have the reciprocal you find the arithmetic mean then your harmonic mean will not be the reciprocal value of your arithmetic mean that you have gotten do we see that right here so that is for harmonic mean so this is for ungrouped and this is for groups don't worry we have examples that we have prepared for us to further understand this concept so uh, you can see i actually brought a uh, mode before median there is a reason because uh, more, uh, median, quartal, deciles, and percentile, they have a lot in common. All right, so let's kick off with mode. So as we've known, you know, mode is actually the value, okay, in that particular data with the highest frequency. So you're talking about the most popular, okay, if there's a particular item that actually occur, right, it occurs more than the other item. So that should be your mode. Okay, so to get your mode for your regular, so just for the most popular, but when it's now grouped, you are going to need a formula like this, right? So this is L1. What does this mean? This is a lower, right? Lower class boundary. So this is the difference, Fx, is the difference between the frequency of the modal class and the one before it. So this is different between the frequency of the modal class and the one after it, right? So this is talking about the class width, the size. You know, we talk about class width. So the size of the modal class. Right, so that is basically what we have, right? So you can use this to find your mode. So let's move to median. So median is just that type of uh, measure, right, whereby you divide your data into two. So that uh, division, you know, that particular center of splitting those things into two equal parts is what we refer to as your median, the middle. The median so you can see right here so if it is on groups you have n over two if the number of items you have actually fall to an odd number so like this now i have one two three four okay so uh, this is not odd right so if i have maybe something like this let's say i have 11 so you can see that i have how many items one two three four five and five is an odd number so my mean will be gotten by this adding one plus this if it is an odd number that we have gotten then we have our solution. So if it's, of course, an even number like this, so I'm going to pick the two that falls in the middle. Three plus seven, that is 10. 10 divided by two, that is five. So that is how I get my median for ungrouped data. Okay, so, and um, don't forget that we can get our mode from our histogram. Okay, so how do you get your mode from your histogram? Locate the highest rectangle, the rectangle with the highest height. So if you have something like this, your histogram, you know, I have something like this right 
I have something like this, right? Okay, let's just take it this way. All right, so this is my highest, right? This is where I'm going to locate my mode from. So what would I do? I will trace from here to this place. Do you see that? Now I will trace from here to this place. Then where they actually meet, this place now is now my mode. Do you see that? Very easy from your histogram. So we can determine your mode from your histogram or you can carry out something like this. First, you prepare your tape, you know, to get your frequencies, your cumulative frequencies, your boundaries and the like. So we are actually on to um, media. So this is for ungrouped data. So when your data is now grouped, you have this, right? Lower uh, distant value. Then you now have plus N over 2. Of course, you know how we used to get this, right? Your frequency, total frequency divided by 2, right? Minus minus the frequency okay before the frequency the cumulative frequency before your median or your median value so do you see that now so if you are going your median, median value as five so what's the frequency before the cumulative frequency before your median class that's where it comes in then you have this the class width of that class then you have your frequency so that is how we do that for median so how do we now determine median from Histogram, it is very easy. You locate the tallest as well. So instead of you now joining, like joining, use line, using lines to join the two bars beside the tallest, what you just do is that once you have located the tallest, then you just draw a vertical line using certain conditions, which I'm going to explain as we go further in this video. So now let's move on to quartiles, deciles, and percentiles. So this divides your data into two, this divides your data into four. This divides your data into 10. This divides your data into 100. Do we see that now? So you can see the similarity uh, between them. So right here, we have the first quarter. The second quarter is actually your median. Do you see? Dividing into two, right? So your third quarter divides it into three. And your fourth quarter, you can see the whole set of uh, data. So we have this, uh, you have divided your data into 10 equal parts, right? Then we have your percentile. Right, so you can ask to find the 50th percentile, whatever percentile. So, median divides your data into two, quarter divides your what data into what into four. So, basically, this is what I'm going to have. Do you see that now? N over four. Decile divides your data into what into 10, percentile into 100. So, you can see how we are going to switch. The formula so very very easy. so depending on what you are looking for so if you are looking for the uh, the first uh, quarter that will be n over 4 right we are looking for the fourth quarter n over okay the first quarter we have n over 4 right basically so that is 1 n over 4 if you are looking for the third quarter that will be 3n right over for third quarter this is your indicator right and you just walk around uh where it falls then you get your solution so right there is just a brief introduction right to what we are going to do in the full video lesson where we have examples and more explanation added to this content so all you just need to do is to hit the link for subscription once you click on it it's going to take you to the my school website so right there you get to subscribe and have access to the full video content and do not forget to hit the like button for us click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload the next video content just for you